Alexander, for those of you who don't know me yet, I've been part of, um, uh, of EcoVersities since its inception in Tamera, and since a few years, uh, I've been part also of the um, steering committee, which is a collective that uh, um, helps support the process in this community that, as you know, is uh, all over the place. and. Uh, uh, embrace a, a very big variety um, of, of people and approach and context. Uh, but our main question is, of course, around education and what are the learning space, autonomous learning space uh, in which we can, that we can co-inform. Uh, and as we know, uh, all of us, I think we are here for this reason, we, we feel uh, it's so important to to nourish our learning space. Uh, really, it has a great impact uh, on on the way uh, we can change our context, our world. So it's been uh, a few years that uh, within this uh, group of friends, and especially during the um, gathering that have happened, that uh, some of us uh, felt the urge to brought the question of uh, feminism and ecofeminism and to, to start connect with other women and feminized bodies and allies um, of all genders that could uh, uh, focus and understand what are the space we need. Also because during the, the, the gathering often there were dynamics in which uh, um, we, we felt there, was, uh, there were tensions or there were uh, gendered um, division of space and care within the gathering, within our own organization. So since last year, basically we in Michoacan, where there was an incredible energy and a lot of this working group that you have seen activating during this gathering actually came from this magic uh, Maging and very healing encounter that we had in Mitra Khan. And there was a, a collectively shared desire to start a working group, a study group, a kind of subgroup um, to reflect more around ecofeminist struggles. And so, because I have been uh, part of uh, different space, different collectives within these struggles, both in Italy, where I'm from, and New York, where I'm based most of, most of the time, I, I somehow took this on me and started to make invitation and started to to have conversation with uh, many friends and, uh, but then the lockdown happened uh, and so, we had to, to localize a little bit the actions. And this is when on my path, Romina and Daniela appeared. And um, it is with them that we have um, created what for now it's uh, a, a, an action, a gesture, a, a proposal, almost an impulse for now mm -hmm. to work in the Mediterranean area but of course, the idea is to connect uh, beyond uh, state nations, beyond borders, beyond natural, geographical, or other, other separations, and rather um, connect with the many nodes in, as we said, in a sort of rhizomatic uh, way, uh, where we can be autonomously moving, because as we know, often this conversation has to be very localized and contextualized, but where we can really exchange tools, practice, uh, uh, ideas uh, um, in, a, in a broader, in a broader um, multiverse. I just want to briefly mention that, uh, uh, well, I come from Italy. Italy is a place in which violence against human, uh, women, it's very, very intense. It's almost a war. Um, we don't only focus on the question of violence uh, because we feel, yes, uh, we need uh, to create space for resistance, and this is one of the level of the struggle. At the same time, we need also to generate spaces in which we activate not only what we are against, but mostly what we are for. So generate uh, 
regenerative spaces. So this is a little bit, uh, um, of course, the, the, the framework in which we, we, we will try to operate, but it is nevertheless important for me to position myself and, and locate the place where I speak from, which is um, a, um, a place like many other in the world that uh, it's, uh, it's uh, we, the patriarchal culture is very, very embedded, it's systemic, it's uh, it manifesting itself in many, many ways, including, um, including harsh violence against women. In Italy, the average is one, uh, every three days a woman is killed by her husband or her lover or her, her boyfriend. Uh, we know that uh, this, has, this has been a conversation also in the Alliance in which we have a strong um, presence of uh, friends uh, um, from Mexico, for example, where uh, the violence uh, against women is similar I, where a lot of indigenous people are part of this Alliance. And as we know, uh, um, indigenous women are a uh, victim of violence and disappearing even in a place like Canada, this is uh, happening, still happening. So this urgency for us also to carve a space in which we could feel safe and protected and, and really openly speak about this and also uh, support each other in, in our thinking and in our co-informing spaces of learning felt like uh, something really Really, really necessary. But as I said, uh, we, we also don't want to only focus on this, but uh, on, uh, on uh, the question of care and the question of uh, social reproduction and how this is really enlived and put in practice in the space that we all, uh, we all inform. So for us in Italy, it's been a lot through our own Ecoversity, which is a free home university. It's a space that it's informed by an artistic sensitivity artist uh, uh, often very um, gr politically grounded and socially engaged but an art for us has been the perspective in which we have articulated uh, um, a lot of uh, social issues and social struggles in, within Free Home University, one of the line of inquiries has been on feminism and on e queer theories also, and queer practices and, uh, and eco-feminism. So we started like this, but again, as we have the chance to be in this larger space, uh, um, we really wanted to um, to invite you in this uh, in this impulse that is this desire to have a school a feminist school uh, which we are um, about to to share with you tonight um hi everybody i'm very happy to meet you and to have the chance to have this conversation with you that is a uh, uh, very important for us because uh, now i made some we made some steps in our um, starting process and I think it's a good moment to um, open a dialogue uh, to be reflexive uh, about these practices that we, we, we made even if they are just the first steps in a process that we made in long and enduring but um, you are very welcome to ask us and to exchange with us in order to give us the feedback and we want to ask you uh, a lot of things about your own experiences on feminism or ecofeminism and um, the colonial experience in your places, in your different places of work and politics. Maybe we have just to say the name, the name of the pro we choose for the project. The name is Meduse. It is a um, jellyfishes in uh, Italian. But as well, it's uh, uh, an acronym for Mediterranean. Um, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> Mediterranean decolonial. Uh, uh, I don't. Uh, I have to to retake the the acronym uh, because I I, I was. I was sure that uh, Alessandra were on the point to introduce to you, but uh, we want to create a Mediterranean Ecofeminist Union for self-education. So we choose Meduse, uh, but uh, 
for us, the, the meaning is uh, as well linked to the jellyfishes. And um, this is not just the, the choice of a name, but is a, a bit much deeper for us because Medusa for us is as well a figuration that we try to use and to learn from in order to orient the poetic and the politics of the process. Why jellyfishes? Because uh, jellyfishes are a very close species for us. They, they, we are uh, situated in the Mediterranean here uh, area and jellyfish are there. They swim and they inhabit the area with us. And we see the changing flows of, of these um, animals. Uh, moreover, we, uh, we want to point that thanks to this figuration, we want to, to stress the need of learn from multi-species uh, relationships and to the place the focus of our activities on relationships further than on subjectivities and uh, um, uh, define experiences. What we want to create are relationships between different groups, even in, informal groups, uh, but what, what, what we want to care of is especially about relationship between us. Of course, we started with a, a local work because uh, um, we meet each other in Salento and we envisage to create something starting from the Salento, uh, just to, pla to place uh, the Salento in our common um, cartography. It is a um, uh, Salento is a, a peninsula in the southernmost area in the hill of Italy between uh, Adriatic and uh, Ionian seas. It's very close to the coast of Albany and historically is a door towards the east and the south within the Mediterranean Sea. And it is a, as well an emblem emblematic point of observation for us for many reasons, just to. to let me evoke some of them. Um, the closeness with the eastern part of Europe, of course, the closeness to the south, and uh, but even historical reason, because uh, this is a, a, a land that has a very long and enduring story of, of domination, different domination uh, all along the, the history, but as well a, a tradition of mixing cultures and mixes, mixing religions and languages. We have several uh, local languages and one of, of the, and we will see after, because one of the first uh, steps that we made to build a web, more than a network, uh, we, we started from the point, for the idea of a, a web of a tentacular relationship. So the first step was, was to uh, go and meet people in this southern uh, Italy, in this uh, Salento area. One of the first steps was the outreaching um, and networking in Salento. Uh, we had a, a meeting, for example, in Melpignano, a little village in, uh, in, in, at the heart of Salento. Um, when we mm, met the newly elected mayor, a young woman, and her team of women elected from an independent, independent electoral list. Uh, she's very young, and uh, it is almost the, the first time we have a so young woman uh, as a mayor in a little but significant city in, within the Salento area, and we met uh, this, women, this woman and uh, her team with a lot of women. Uh, and we discuss about their political program, but as well we go deeper in the discussion, um, discussing with them on the local struggle with the, with the, uh, with the domination structures, the, their relationship with the, um, they, their um, feedback about sex is, sexism and machism in family and in politics uh, uh, as well, because uh, all of them were involved, uh, engaged in political uh, issues. And um, about what, uh, what uh, uh, the meaning of being uh, um, politically engaged, but even women, simply women 
in the south of Europe, in the south of Italy. And uh, uh, we discussed together the need of uh, taking care of um, places of well-being and contact with nature and to protect commons. And they are starting to envisage activities in order to um, uh, follow their program and their ideas. Uh, and like a surprise, discussing with them, even uh, discussing, going with them at the um, historical role that women uh, uh, played in the history, the political history of the, this little agri uh, agricultural, agri uh, mainly agricultural uh, village. I was just adding in the chat that this, uh, fr this friend, uh, this young mayor Daniela is speaking about was particularly interesting for us also, not because we are interested too much in having a dialogue with the administration, although that's always uh, interesting to, to establish, but especially because she's been an activist uh, in the land defending um, and uh, activist against uh, infrastructure work that also have been imposed in this land. Um, she works very close with farmers and activists that uh, protect the natural food cycle that are against uh, the exploitation of uh, workers and especially migrant workers uh, in the local agriculture um, sector okay. and so on. We have this first surprise, the, the, the wish of this mayor and the, her team to share a place with us. We are, at this moment, we are still reasoning about this, this uh, proposition. We think it could be interesting to have um, a place in which make activities and even to be in this village in order to work with native women and migrant women who are in this area. So could be interesting, but for the moment we, are, we did not take any kind of decision, but we, we made other local activities. The second step was uh, uh, the meeting of local artists and even artists and the art curators who come from abroad, but who live uh, even temporary in Salento. And we found, we found with them a lot of, of common interest across our respective action research projects. Um, the role of women in cultural and social process, as well then in artistic and cultural production, the dimension of memory, and the production of archives of minor stories and of counter histories to tell about the relationship of women with the environment and relationship with, uh, between women with the human and non human. Uh, and so we decided to, to, to start to work together and we enlarged the group. We, uh, and then we had the first step, uh, we met the women home in Lecce. Um, that is a, a, a group of association and groups uh, of feminists and working with migrants, working ex uh, on feminism, working on uh, a group of exchange of experience and there were even in this uh, group of um, different activism uh, women coming from uh, Nona di Meno that is uh, the Nona Mass in Italy and uh, we met them we discussed together um, about their past and present projects and we uh, crossed our uh, uh, intention in the idea of work on ecofeminism because they um, had just created some months uh, ago uh, an ecofeminist group, but just starting to starting to think to how to improve the interest for ecofeminism. So we decided together to collaborate on the Jellyfishes project, uh, trying to. Uh, find together way of uh, create pedagogical process together. So these were the first, uh, um, first three steps of our local work, but with uh, a lot of good feedback, a lot of wish of working together. And we envisage, ah, and then we had another one, another important step was a, sim a symbolic action that we made uh, at the Fondazione La Orlemon, that is a, an artistic foundation that was created by five art artists, five men, in the Salento, uh, 
uh, with the uh, intention of working on um, relation, relational heart and community oriented experiences. And uh, they created a, a foundation in order to create a, an institution of commons. So they were open to meet other people. And so we uh, went in their garden and with the, all the other women that we met in this uh, uh, free steps of work, of local work, we decided to plant uh, um, two three, two tree, uh, the fig tree that is uh, an autochthonous tree, and uh, it's very interesting because it symbolizes the uh, woman sexual organs in the in the um, local language. And then we planted as well a tree of feyoya, a tropical plant, but this this plant is perfected, adapted in this uh, local. Um, area and um, we worked together uh, women that we we met and this with uh, these artists in order to uh, put a seed uh, even if they were uh, three for us it was a, a, a symbolic way to put a common seed in the ground of this project uh, the, the territorial work will uh, continue of course and uh, it will be made in different uh, ways because uh, a part of the work will be uh, online because of the uh, pandemic uh, situation. But uh, we envisage with them to create a moment for uh, self-education, self-training about the three uh, issues that we identified as our common interest for the project. Feminism, uh, ecological and uh, some symbiotical relationships and the colonial relationship as well because we are in the Mediterranean area we are, uh, we are within a story of colonialism as well if we want to to interact with the people around this area we have to to point the question of the colonialism or colonialism and <laughs> the colonial the, the coloniality and uh, now I go, uh, I give the flu to Romina and uh, I try to change my computer and at the end I will uh, just present to you some pictures uh, of the moment in which we planted the trees together in order to give you an idea of the atmosphere and of the activities. This is my <laughs> daughter, <laughs> Flor. And so please Romina, take the flu. Yeah. Thank you, Alessandra. Thank you, Daniela. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Romina De Novellis from uh, Paris. I'm uh, an Italian uh, performance and visual artist uh, and a friend of uh, Alessandra and Daniela, whom I love very much, of course. And um, I'm a jellyfish. <laughs> um, I want to just introduce to you uh, two different practices because uh, uh, I want to create a link with uh, our last uh, action, collective action that we made last week. Um, personally, I'm very committed to politics of care. Uh, in, the, um, in this sense, eight years ago, I created a school in Paris dedicated to, to somatic uh, practice. Uh, we are all dancers and performers with a pedagogical uh, training aimed at uh, somatic uh, practices. And uh, we work in uh, dialogue with uh, osteopaths, shiatsu therapists, uh, women's osteopaths, uh, um, psychoanalysts, uh, etc. And uh, our school called uh, Atelier Sensa is aimed at autistic children, women, victims of uh, Paris attack, uh, sick people, uh, people with uh, disabilities, uh, and all vulnerable bodies. In this uh, sense, we consider that we are all vulnerable, and that's why in our school we welcome people uh, in uh, difficulty, but also people, all people who want to uh, work their body. Um, and uh, that they want to connect with uh, the sense of care. Our school uh, is, uh, is not a ghetto uh, for uh, sick people and uh, is a frontier place uh, between uh, vulnerability and strength, between uh, fear and courage, between uh, 
pain and rebirth. Uh, the bodies create a network, hence uh, the idea of Meduse, but uh, also of uh, the Domus Artist Residency. Um, is a project that I founded two years ago together with Mauro, Pauline, Maria Cristina and Enrica. Domus is a place of research, uh, meeting and dialogue on the Mediterranean. And it is located in Galatina, the city uh, in uh, a city in Salento, Apulia, in the south of Italy in the, and uh, in the south of this part of Europe where Tarantate, women, but this is another story, came to ask uh, uh, for a pardon uh, from uh, St. Paul. And uh, with the, a strong eco-feminist uh, theoretical approach, approach, we try to bring uh, together female artists, curator, researcher, all, all originally from Mediterranean area. Through um, talks and uh, residency, we try to um, we try to rewrite a counter history, a country histoire of the Mediterranean, giving um, the work back to women and denouncing the abuses and violence on the territories and culture of the Mediterranean. All this practice allowed me to rethink performative practice as well. Rethink, rethinking a performance um, performance art as a bodily practice, but also as an embodiment of theories and ideas. So the experience of Atelier, Atelier Senza, Domus Artist Residency, and mine as a performance artist contribute to the Meduse project. Our common uh, desire is to uh, rethink a transmission knowledge and education too. So in continuity with uh, Daniela's speech, um, I want to present to you the evening of November 25th, curated by Meduse. As you all know, uh, November 25th is uh, the World Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. And on this very um, important uh, occasion, Meduse invited women, women and men from all over the world to join us on a Zoom session like this one um, for a one minute reading about time story. This is the title of uh, a video projection project on the walls of Paris uh, um, that the Domus team has been carrying out every evening since the beginning of the curfew and the second lockdown in France. For more than 50 days today, we have been giving the floor mainly to women. We invite them to read the bad story in a bedtime story. And then we project their readings on different walls of Paris each night. Um, the night of November 25th was um, fabulous because together with a hundred women from all around over the world, we read in memory of the victims in support of all the women who suffer violence every day in defense of the rights of, the, of, of victims who um, too often do not know who to turn to following domestic violence. And in honor to of all of, of those women who manage to report and who can help other women to do the same, to do so. Um, following this intense and exciting uh, evening on November 25th, Meduse is creating a living bibliography. Um, you can see some title in the short video that Pauline produced for this night, and I will show you now about uh, the, this, uh, this evening of uh, uh, November 25th. Um, with the same uh, intensity and the same objectives, Medusa is organizing a series of theoretical meetings 
for the next few months. Um, of course, in this moment of pandemic, the space uh, for reflection and meeting becomes uh, the network, uh, as to the, like this night, of course. Uh, then our next meetings uh, will uh, therefore be mostly virtual, but we hope uh, to soon be able to meet you all in um, Salento uh, or in Mediterranean, uh, because uh, our, uh, our school, because Meduse, will be uh, uh, founded on uh, practices, on experience, on encounter, on dialogue. Meduse um, aims to create residencies, specific training or formation, public talks, and uh, Meduse will invite you and uh, female artists, uh, curators, researcher, pedagogue, journalists, and all those who want to reestablish transmission, knowledge, and education with us. Um, Meduse is uh, very young. We are, we are just born, we are very, very young. And this is still a nascent project, uh, but it is uh, precisely this uh, being in, uh, in the making that uh, will uh, feed the practices of transmission and education. Uh, voila, I think uh, I talk too much. <laughs> so I launched the video of November 25th. And then I leave the floor to you all and maybe to Ale Alessandra and uh, Daniela again. I had to leave home so I could find myself, find my own intrinsic nature buried under the personality that had been imposed on me. که قلب باغچه دارد آرام آرام از خاطرات سبز توهی می شود و حس باغچه انگار چیزی مجرد است که در انزوای باغچه پوسیده است. Voi dite non siamo neri solo perché sapete che i neri stanno in fondo alla scala razziale americana. Я хочу умереть и чтобы мои органы раздали бедным, которые хотят жить. Я хочу умереть и чтобы родные оплакивали мое опустошенное тело, покрытое цветами. Подарси, что la fuga di Medea dalla Colchide insieme a Giasone sia stato uno di quegli errori inevitabili che le donne finiscono per fare quando si ritrovano con le spalle al muro. Le femme, et particulièrement les femmes racisées, connaissent une expérience beaucoup plus intense et dangereuse du fait qu'elles deviennent les proies des sociétés postcoloniales, racistes et patriarcales. Em toda a nossa história, vimos a violência contra as mulheres transmitida brutalmente pela força, palavra, opressão, patrimônio, abuso, poder e instituição. Thank you, Romina, for sharing this. It was, of course, um, on that day we were reached, uh, we were uh, speaking with the different collectives uh, and uh, there is this day that people unite. Of course, we all know and think that it's important to, to keep the, the fight and the struggle every day, but there is, uh, there is a particular day and it was beautiful to, to really gather together. We normally gather in space, but somehow this space of the digital, um, as uh, it's been uh, all along these ecoversity encounters and other assemblies that happen online, they can still, um, uh, they can still become place for, for um, strengthening our capacities and, and uh, making us feel more connected and, and together. We, I think we are very curious to, to know um, something about your own practices 
uh, of, of course you can give us feedback about what we told you but uh, what we the, the idea that drive the, us uh, in organizing this uh, dialogue with you it was to share some questions uh, about your own experiences because we are building day by day our own practices and we want to share with you your difficulties your keywords your key practices your um on vision on about uh, um, a self-education project that uh, is articulated around uh, uh, ecofeminism and the colonial the colonialism so feel free to take the floor to give us feedback and to add practices and experiences i will try to take some notes because we are really interesting interested in uh, your own experience Yes, I would support that because, I mean, uh, what we shared is just uh, a few initial steps that have been also highly compromised by the social distancing, not being able to meet people normally in our artistic inquiries and, and uh, activism. It's so important to be with people, to meet with people. So all of our initial plan was disrupted. And what we show you is just a few a few gestures that are yeah just a little bit a beginning hopefully so for me it would be uh, would be i really encourage uh, you to share more about in what you do all of you here uh, i know most of you do um, practice this question in your everyday in your work and in your um, studies and your learning spaces so I, I really encourage you to, to share with us in which way you, you do it, in which way we can. The, the main question for us were, you know, how can we more actively unlearn patriarchy, coloniality, modernity, and capitalism? I mean, it's huge questions, of course, but these, these are, are, are our questions. And especially in this space, we feel to dare to really throw it uh, to you on you and what are the ways in which feminist pedagogy a pedagogy of politics a, pega, a pedagogy as politic of care and multi-species well-being can be enacted and leaving it in place the embedded in the space we create and now eventually what should go in a sort of feminist decolonial anti-curriculum how could we um, weave together both the theoretical and, and praxis in what we imagine as a feminist school or how to bring feminism in the school uh, or meta school we operate in so these are burning questions for us that we really would like to to discuss with you and and to hear your examples because it's what we mostly need well um i think if i may i'm gonna uh, talk a little bit but actually it's more a question um that's the, about the capitalization of this theme because I see uh, nowadays that more institutions, they are willing to talk about those things. So they are bringing into the highlights, either museums or theaters and so on. I personally, I work with art and I see that the art system gives more space for those themes, which is great. But my question is not, uh, how not to let it be capitalized and uh, become ephemeral just like it's one season or it's one year too because this is a a movement of for uh, of resi resistance and it's a movement that lasts a life long for most of us and and it's how to um, make it um authentic and not a theme for like a season or a very ephemeral thing and then it's gone and then there's another because there are many issues but how to really to create a, a, a very su sustainable system of implementing the these new epistemologies this would be my it's more a question i would say because i also want to find out how to 
to be in this yeah in this way more sustainable make maybe i can say some words about that yes, i'm not sure to to uh, exactly um, answer to your question but i try to give you some i some idea about the preoccupation that we have in building this project for example just to give you an example and to be uh, in contact with the trouble. <laughs> when we had to organize the um, November 25th uh, with the day uh, uh, for the elimination against violence, our concern was to do something true and to uh, communicate in, uh, sincerely, sincerely with the uh, with person around us and with women that we involved in the conversation because we know that at this moment, uh, claim for uh, ecofeminism and decoloniality start to be um, almost, mm, I don't want to say mainstream, but at least pop, no? So, but I, I think that uh, uh, all of us and a lot of people that we met, we are working about these um, issues since a lot of time, even when they were not mainstream issues and they were um, embodied in our practices. For me, me I'm, I'm an activist and I'm, I'm a researcher uh, working especially on commons and participation. And I was all, I have always been working with the um, gender uh, issues, with the uh, issues of, uh, about new ecosystem uh, to build together in um, urban space and uh, in uh, uh, generally in our territories, and um, so we are we had the time to um, uh, get in in a long time of practices and work uh, the um, idea of how these kind of uh, issues are deep and diffused. And at this moment, of course, they become, uh, mm, they are uh, more, uh, the, the public space is more open to this kind of issues. I think it's good. I think it's good to, to um, extend the dialogue and the conversation about these issues. But what is different, what it could be different for a, a temporary fashion uh, strategy and a, a, a deep work is the way in which you you build your, your the steps of your ep epistemology no so we are trying for example in in building this uh, this day uh, uh, this um, uh, uh, performative moment for the day of uh, for the elimination again uh, of the we of the violence uh, against women we try to um, use a uh, a different kind of, co of, co of communication in digital space. For example, we try to don't be, um, to don't embrace this compulsivity in communicating and in creating contents. We, we took the time to contact everybody to explain the project and to, uh, we choose poetry and literature in order to stay in contact with the, the um, uh, already existing epistemologies, uh, words and meanings. And so we choose this way in order to don't be just another context on feminism in this day, we, we choose our own pattern to communicate it, to create a reasoning and exchange and, ex, and exchanging dialogue with people involved in, the, in this performance, for example. And even in our local work with people, we decide to uh, take the time to speak face to face with everybody to understand their background. And so we are embracing a, 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 a sort of a slow action research project um, modulated around relationships. So I don't know, maybe it could be, it could be um, co-opted by the main by the mainstream culture, but we are we are working in another di direction, and I hope in the long term this difference that will matter and that will uh, uh, build a different community.
I don't know if uh, I was clear in my in my in the sharing my experience, our constant preoccupation because you're right. Yes. Of course, it, this yes. is a it is a special moment, uh, and uh, I think it it is not bad that it, that uh, feminism and the coloniality and the eco feminism are now a la page. No, are now mainstream but there is a long tradition behind us and a lot of doing things to do uh, for the future so uh, let's stay in, in contact with the trouble in contact with the meanings in contact with the process that we are building together i am based uh, together with Dan uh, daniela and naya we are based in graz is a city around uh, in Austria, and we have around 300,000 inhabitants. And what we faced some years ago, it was an interesting moment that we, uh, I'm working in the cultural field, that means in, in more in their art and activism, let's say. And what we faced is that um, the female activists here in our town were not at all connected. That means they stayed in very diverse groups, uh, one part at the university, University, another part in a, in a, um, organizations dealing with um, any kind of um, how to say um, women uh, uh, subjects let's say and what we first of all when we started to um, um, how to say form a group of um, women uh, we started to connect these very very diverse groups and it was interesting uh, it took us one year to uh, write one month which is right now the basis of our work here in Graz and it was interesting because we had to learn uh, very diverse uh, languages because each um, how to say um, we are all coming from the diverse backgrounds that means also we speak with different uh, words even if we mean the same thing but we that was really really super interesting I don't know Naya would you like to add something to that process ago in in with the women's action forum yeah, I think it was a moment that we, uh, I mean, previous we had some attempts to make uh, things together and um, and have conversations that will come. We developed something called the Weave, the Daniela can talk that we are trying to revive at some point. There was a, a moment where people of different backgrounds will come together and that, and that thing of unifying different type of uh, activists working, but also all kind of people in different levels of the city that were also uh, somehow supporting uh, uh, ideas, uh, similar ideas was for us very important. So the, the Women's Action Forum was uh, coming, I mean, like developing much bigger than those initial um, gatherings and was uh, really a moment, and I think it still is uh, 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 the necessity of uh, coordinate, I mean, to, to give um, importance to what the other is doing. And this is something I found very important in this decolonizing system, that sometimes we are giving so much importance to the things that are pushing us down, that we are not giving importance to the initiatives. And the initiatives and the gr grassroots are working hard to 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 stay and we we should just acknowledge each other listen to each other exchange and i think this was the attempt for me uh uh i mean uh, 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 as in that way i understand the the that system was a, a little bit to not only to talk but to listen to the others and to see what what everybody's doing and I think this collective um, acknowledgement is one of the things I, 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 I give a lot of importance in my, in, uh, in, in, in what we do, I, I, I would say. I think this year was rather de-articulated because of COVID. I have the impression that we have to find the strength, but the beginning was really strong and contaminating to see all this energy around. But I, I, found, I find that we are also failing in accelerating this process because the task is much too huge. And, the, and now we have, I mean, to contest patriarchy and, and to, uh, in general, 
So I don't know, next year, if I have the feeling that we have to find other ways of working that are more effective, not only in the platform, but really in daily life, uh, um, how to find more ways of, sometimes I feel like we are too soft and we need to be, keep the softness and the gentleness. Maybe Dani Emilio will be the one to talk about radical tenderness here, but how to be more effective in this tenderness to, Act, uh, act strongly because the scenario is going worse, uh, uh, even if we have positive uh, experiences. Try and give just a little bit of context, maybe, of how this uh, these bunch of really complex things have been moving through me and moving and how I'm moving with them. Um, so I. I work as part of the collective uh, Ale just mentioned, gesturing towards decolonial futures. Um, and also I have been uh, moving as a trans feminist educator for some time uh, before joining this collective and, uh, and in parallel to this work. So I also work with another group uh, that's based between Lisbon and Brazil, which is called AndLab, uh, Research for Art Thinking and Politics of Togetherness. But I'm mainly a performance artist that um, for some time has been disenchanted with the arts world and um, has been uh, brought back to believing in the power of art in terms of pedagogical processes of learning and learning and also healing in many ways from the various different violences that both we receive and we perpetrate. So all of these things connect the, the works in these various collectives and also in my personal journey through radical tenderness, which Daniela just brought up which is um, uh, a set of words that I came across when I worked as part of La Pocha Nostra, which is another performance art collective based between the US and Mexico. Um, and this, um, this conjunction of like this oxymoron or, you know, this two words that seem like they do two very different things for me have been very complementary, And, um, the reason why I had some trouble in just like uh, b jumping in at an impulse of Daniela's um, call here to action is because in the in the tenderness and in the radicality, there's um, there's something that is really similar to me, um, and um, there's there's a way in which uh, what uh, Tizo was speaking about the durational aspect of radicality to me seems to ask for tenderness with ourselves and with our movements and a lot of the time um, I feel that uh, when we are very um, outwards with our action and with our urgency sometimes we stretch ourselves to uh, uh, intensely so that we break apart and we see that happening a lot in our movements in in collective endeavors that last for a bit with high intensity and then they you know for internal clashes or with just burnouts and and so on they they have a limited life and and the same with a lot of people that get involved in this kind of work and 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 then we fail to acknowledge all the different sorts of emotions that they um, that they in, uh, arise in us, right? Because there's um, all the tough ones of facing the uh, outer injustice, but there's also all the tough ones of noticing how much we are constituted by depending on these very injustices to um, well, understand ourselves as subjects, as like our whole being is built upon maintaining all these injustices. And that's a really tough process to go through psychologically, emotionally, and, and physically. And so there's something about radical tenderness that has always uh, been um, 
very moving for me of, of trying to have these two things accompany each other. So the more we risk uh, the, the radical action, the more we also open the volume on the, the tenderness, which would be the care in the subtleties of the emotional landscape that's that's arising in that. And and when I say emotions, it's it's also physically present in our bodies and in our collective bodies and in our metabolic bodies and trying to join these um, different struggles that we're naming here um, between feminist, transfeminism and um, ecofeminism and you know the patriarchy and the coloniality issues that are just overarching everything. There's so much um, that provokes so many um, Curto circuitos, short circuits in our systems, and we're having to uh, be uh, like facing so many kinds of deaths and transmutations in in our own selves and in the things that we believe in and the types of alliances that we can make at each different moment and and um, it's really hard to maintain uh, uh, in in gesturing towards decolonial futures, we talk a lot about stamina, of how how do we continue to nurture something like a life pulse that is um, able to provide some some sort of uh, grounding in which we can also uh, rest. But when I say rest, it's not not be in action, but uh, um, rest in the source that provides us with the energy to continue the fight. Right. So. Um, yeah, I think it's it's been very challenging for me, and it's been uh, like uh, uh, a real uh, juggle between how much of this is discourse, how much of this is important to do in languaging and in in concepts that help things travel. And we're here because we're able to have a conversation. And if we were just re relying on body practices, we wouldn't be able to be having all sorts of different exchanges. I've, I've had to reconcile with words, um, with like, for example, writing texts uh, about radical tenderness, which is something that for a long time, it was like, well, how could I even talk about this? You know, we experience this kind of stuff, but then we also notice, you know, the power of words to worlds, you know, that, that some something about that gestures towards a, a field that we can, direct our energies towards but then also it's it's very clear how um hard and for me personally at the moment how hard it is to be in attunement with so many people in so many different places of the world and yet find myself having a really hard time understanding how locally i can enact these practices right and uh and what about these things resonate with life choices that we're able to make and all the complexities in in um, in those kinds of daily practices as well as our ideals and how our ideals are also shaped by the kinds of people that we're with and conversations that we have. So there's a lot of radical tenderness in terms of trying to put that in practice in relationships out, out between uh humans and non-humans uh but and also internally between the different people that live inside ourselves and also the different um other beings and other energies that i think more and more we're trying to get out of this eurocentric uh mode uh, of um of in encapsulating everything in um stuff that we can understand right so like feeling into a bunch of things that we can't understand yet but that uh provoke this unease and a lot of you are talking about staying with the, the trouble and all that and and of course this trouble is a bunch of things that we're feeling and um uh yeah for sure human and and more human and just the last thing for example for for some time in in the last couple of years i've, I've been working on some practices that stem from radical tenderness, but then have been disimmunization practices, which um, have tried to widen this field of effective responsibility um, a lot between humans, say things that I have noticed that we have a lot of uh, 
space in ourselves to be staying with the trouble in relationships that really matter for us. Like when, when we fall in love with somebody, we can really process a lot of really hard stuff. Um, and But how do we fall in love with more somebodies? And how do we fall in love with more some that are not bodies even? And so now with um, the pandemic, it's it's been really interesting because the disimmunization practices that used to be so much between human bodies and, you know, as a performance artist, you do these workshops, everybody, you know, rolls around, licks each other and smells each other's armpits and all that provides a lot of intimacy and love very quickly. But what do you do when it's pandemic time and it's Zoom time and how do we also try to look for this space of intimacy with other kinds of beings and that has taken me to a research of practices that I'm now developing with like the director of and Lab, which is Fernando Eugenio, which are called the dis dissolution practices and those have to do with uh, again what Tiza was saying a little bit more of an extended temporality they they it feels weird because they don't have an immediate um uh like uh, political uh, implication of um, what would be like an activist manifestation, but it feels like a field in which we are having to understand that there is something even bigger, like those these legislations and uh, and uh, fights on the streets really matter, and there is also something bigger that we're having to learn how to connect to so that our vision doesn't stay so limited as the things that we were born into understanding that matter. That'll be my spiel for now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you for articulating so beautifully and so, so much, uh, so much, so much can, uh, um, of all you're uh, saying. I can talk about one practice that we do um, and um, um, I mean, I, I wrote a number of keywords, but maybe I can talk about the code of conduct, code of care. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm working uh, in an academy and also sort of working within communities, uh, different communities um, as and, and an artist, but let me just sort of focus on an in academy example. Um, and so we, ha we have started to work with this uh, idea of a code of care. It's just sort of establishing um, basically sort of like the intake about um, how we will um, might want to sort of build up a space together. So it's something that you um, we do in the very, very beginning and then, and we might sort of like map out some areas of things like uh, you speak for yourself, you speak from your from your perspective and not for others, uh, speak for yourself and not for others, uh, be attentive of how much space you're taking, um, give space for others, um, understanding that people are where they are at their at whenever they they're only where people are only where they're at when they are at you know it's just like uh, you can't sort of um, you can opt in and app, opt out um, and um, yeah um, so, um, these kind of sort of different sort of uh, um, sets of um, codes of care that are also sort of negotiated so and it's something uh, that we introduce and sort of build up at the very beginning of something and then revisit those codes and, and say, okay, what are, where are we with that? And have a discussion about what happens when those, those codes are transgressed or borders are crossed. And so um, sort of making, making the space, preparing the space. Yes, I think how, how we make space is a very important question. Andrea, I saw you. Oh, think, yes. I, I, I wanted to, to share some things that are, it's on my mind. I'm, I'm from uh, Ecuador, I live in Quito. And there are so, so many things that resonate here right now, like uh, the, the idea of how feminism is moving and, and how it, it is growing every time more like the the, um, I think that here in Latin America since 2016, it's been like a more political, um, like, a, I don't know, like, a, I don't, I, with Vivas Nos Queremos, this movement, it has started something to put us together. Like Latin America now is having like a 
something similar we share more between uh, feminist groups, even feminism and feminist groups has been here like for such a long time. And what I think it, it will be like, it comes to my mind is that we have here practices that, um, that uh, the, the politics of care, um, it's part of our ambient cosmology, cosmovision, cosmo living. Care is part of how we see a community. So we, we see it as we need to take care of each other because otherwise, how is the community going to work? Like this idea of I me and, and the idea that I take care of you because you're going to take care of someone else. So it kind of, it is part of, uh, in, in many ways, because colonial system and like modernity and all that, we need to be productive and how are we related with one another is has come to all these ideas of uh, we we are we are forgetting our, our, our roots we are forgetting our own ways of being however i think that uh like uh, for example in in the experiment that we did in this this place uh, el huerto que cura, uh, we started like something and then we saw that care is part of the lesson that comes from the soil. So it's part of our territories. The soil tells us always to come back to care. And we have that like in our bodies, but with uh, feminist, move, feminist movements, what I've seen like in the past years, we have, have politics of care. We talk a lot about care, but it, 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 is, it has become like a speech that it's in our heads and how are we, how are we living it? How are we embodying that practice? I think it's it's a question that we have, but we are not getting into it. Sometimes like with, with movements here in the conversations, it's super hard to just bring the speech to our bodies and, and to just see what our bodies tell us about that. And that's something that I, I love what you're saying, like the practices that you're doing and I would love like if we could do something to share it also with some movements here in Ecuador. I invited some people, but they were like, I don't know what is okay, I'll try, but we, we could like, it would be so nice to share because I think that um, bringing the speech, bringing this idea of care comes also like, it, it is something that it needs to be taught because we are used to also to just bring words to our heads and then how are we going to embody that and that's something that I, I like to say I love to just offer myself to just make a zoom or something to put like a lot of people together from here from Latin America would be super, from Quito from Ecuador would be super nice to share and the other thing is like how are we uh, looking at ourselves, like I love the idea of, of taking the queer, uh, the queer point of view because it, it, it kind of, for me, it's like a methodology, like a tool to understand how am I, what, what, are, what, what do I have from modernity? What do I, what do, what layers do I have, do I have in my body? And how do I want to work with them? Like, what do I want to do? So for me, kind of, this puts the idea like with, with queer theory, I, I, I use it like a, like a way of breaking things. And like what I've got to my, to the discovering of, of that is that we always come back to love and care. Like what we, whatever we're doing, and even if we are open of like everything, we have to come back to love and care. So that's something that I think that from many places it, it, it comes. And especially from my territory, I think from the Andes, that's one of the lessons that we have, like love and care is just a part of super simple and super complex also, but I want to share that. You know, as, um, how would I put it? As a Caribbean person, surviving the United States <laughs> at this moment. Um, as an artist, 
Um, I find that my movement here is that of being always in translation. I'm always in a process of being of translating, not just language, but also feeling and uh, experience. And in the last six, now going into seven years of my uh, my research uh, as an activist researcher. Um, through the lens of motherhood, I've discovered that really a, a very key question for a lot of people, and I'll just remain at the cisgendered female, is the idea of um, a lot of us cannot even begin to fathom the question of what is it to be a woman in patriarchy where when we can't even get to the point of what is it to be human in patriarchy because at least here in the united states systemically speaking um, there is a group of people that from its inception has been considered non-human and that is still a very violent process being lived through the laws uh, institutions codes um, yeah so for me when I mentioned this I feel that uh, the, any feminism that I like to engage in and with and through and beyond um, has to have a space where and I, I, we could definitely use this idea of radical tenderness, uh, a space where we can hold these uh, conflicts and tensions. Because obviously, in this contesting of language, which I think I also do a lot in order to translate, a, a lot of pain is going to surface. Because at least here in the United States, there's many, many different types of feminism that do not come together, you know. Um, there's a lot of universalizing that happens. Yeah? So it's like typical capitalism, right? It's in at least here, the way it's manifested, I think it's also in many other spaces manifested. It's about compartmentalizing and keeping everybody separate. And so what happens is that when a group speaks of a particular pain or a particular silencing that's being done by another group, it, it takes a long time to sit with the pain and heal and then venture into creating new language or how do we become allies or, you know, um, these types of uh, very important um, homework, <laughs> for lack of a better word, that needs to occur it be, so that we can have dialogue. Um, I know that, you know, one thing that I've always felt too is that when I, especially when I go into these ecoversity um, gatherings, I always speak to somebody that has a long history of where they have been locally. And I know that that's very important. I think feminism to work it locally is also important. And then there's, at least here in the United States, as, as I've experienced it, it's really hard to say I've been here in a real, for a really long time. My, the, the idea of my local isn't experienced as somebody that has been living in their place uh, or their country for generations, you know, not just them, but in their families. And all. So all of this, I feel in the sort of separation of, from, from motherland and being in translation and all that, I think are important uh, factors to the idea of personhood, who gets to be a person who doesn't. Um, is for me very important to at least feel um, in feminist circles or in circles that say that they are working towards a future um, via uh, or using a feminist tool. Um, I'd like to hear a little more also. Thank you so much. Oh, it's incredible the, the way you are all articulating these questions and and responding and sharing your experience. I'd like to hear if possible, if any of you here want to speak and then of course I want to hear from all of you. 
but uh, I, I know um, Suzanne Richman is here, Michelle is here. This question of how to build a feminist curriculum, like and how to, to bring feminist practices in institutions as uh, for formal education institutions. We heard from Rotor, which is a cultural institution, but how we also decolonize institutions when we inhabit them. I'd like to hear your, your experience in that. I'll just say briefly that I have a non-binary offspring who's 23 years old and my, my son, who's okay with being a son, um, works to support um, transformation of patriarchy by going into public schools and doing nonviolence training with um, students at the high school level. And Aiden represents um, a nonviolent form of, of humanity and is very skilled in transforming the language we use and the practices and the pressures that young people put on each other. Um, so I think we have to look at violence prevention and transformation of patriarchy and transformation of violence against women from a systemic point of view that includes um, people of all gender identities and especially working um, in, in different spaces to guide um, male identified people to be less aggressive. Um, so it's sort of a, a mutual aid, a mutual growth, a mutual development, because creating women's not creating refuge for women is critical, but transforming violent behavior with the with the people who are socialized to become more violent, raised in a sexist society is also critical. So I offer that. And, and at the high school level, you know, working with youth, working to interrupt patterns learned in families. And it's really exciting to hear about your project also. <clears throat> it's a really complicated, as a long question, it's like, <laughs> it's a really, really long conversation. But I, and I'm, I'm thinking um, I can just like do bullet points of what we've been doing at our academy. Um, so, um, well, um, we've done cluster hiring, you know, so I'm, um, I'm a research lector in social practices and we have about 30 uh, teachers. Um, and uh, as a result of cluster hiring, which means like finding any possibility of of bringing in other practices. Uh, we've managed to sort of decenter the teaching body so that it's actually a majority of BIPOC, by, um, um, POC, by, by POC. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, it, with um, uh, an influx of really, really interesting sort of practitioners, um, artists and activists um, and theorists, um, they have been introducing practices um, pedagogic practices from their work. So we've seen a lot of like um, um, queer pedagogies, um, decolonial listening practices, lots of sort of feminist practices, um, really sort of focus on sort of embodied listening, embodied writing, um, embodied knowledge, um, and uh, practices of mending, um, uh, focus on collective practices, um, and uh, translingual experimentation. And these are all from the work of, 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 of the teachers and, and um, what, um, what work they bring into the academy. Um, and we've also worked with an anti-discrimination agency um, who is working with a conflict resolution and forms of nonviolent communication with teacher training. Um, and we also have like a decolonial uh, decolonizing, regendering um, critique, uh, critique um, uh, workshop. I can sort of uh, post in um, these questions. Uh, we do like these uh, education days where we ask um, teachers outside of social practices to bring their curriculum. And we do this phase one and phase two, where we um, uh, people are, are 
analyzing the curriculum and see possibilities of transformation. Um, yeah, so, so those are kind of the, the, I guess, like four areas that we're addressing, um, but it's just the beginning really. But I think sort of this element of like nonviolent communication and, um, and the sort of areas around sort of transformative justice and, you know, trying to sort of um, uh, think about sort of how domination plays, you know, sort of think about sort of how to uh, um, have a feminist practice. Um, it's also addressing sort of the, this, this tendency for domination, which is sort of thinking in, in these binary terms, you know, of right, wrong, good, bad, winner, loser. And it's, it's a real work to try and, you know, work through those kind of binaries. Hi, hi. I'd just like to add something before I have to go to bed because it's uh, almost 12 o'clock here. Um, so, yes, so just to say thanks for this rich uh, um, conversation and inputs. Um, so, so I'm work in environmental humanities. And so, um, so a lot of the um, approach to my form of sort of teaching, learning, unlearning is to um, shift the language of uh, environment and sustainable development um, from this kind of utilitarian, um, uh, so, you know, language that's used in the UN, et cetera. Um, to, to ideas of uh, care and nurture and reciprocity. So, so we bring in uh, ideas of ecofeminism in understanding uh, cyclic relationships about uh, our relationships with nature, um, nurturing those cyclic relationships with our water cycles or carbon cycles. Um, and so, you know, I mean, uh, well, humanities in the in our university disciplinary department. So, and pretty much in humanities, it's kind of, you know it's politics and law, with, but without nature and ecology. And when I studied botany, it was ecology without people. And so, um, yeah. So I, I uh, yeah, a lot of my teaching is. Uh, um, you're yeah, bringing in the understanding of our interconnectedness. And I, I must say, I find that this, because the students that are there are doing politics or psychology and um, they, they, they really do take to the, to the shift in thinking because they find that they, they haven't thought about um, our relationships with nature or each other in this kind of interrelational way. And so, yeah, so I, I guess I, speak, so I use scholars, like, I love Anna Singh, um, bringing her work, um, a lot of the new material feminist, uh, 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 Brihati, et cetera, into, into these uh, conversations, yeah. Thank you, everybody that can, can't come to the other room, because uh, it was so rude. And we want to, to know more, to exchange more with you, and maybe to invite you if one day we will have a real school, because uh, uh, all of you have a very interesting uh, um, experience and uh, knowledge about this. So I think our idea is not just to create a school, even to create a place for crossing experiences. So. Welcome to Medusa one day and let's go to the other room if you can or thank you very much to have been here and to have exchanged with us your interesting conversation and experiences. Thank you so much. We'll be in touch for more if you cannot join right now. Thanks so much. Good.